good day. This is Bennett, also known as Jeremiah. Today we're going to deal with this type of questions from the basics to the higher level. By the time you're done with this video, you'll be equipped with enough skills to be able to deal with all the possible weird questions that may come out. So, let's begin. Alright, let's start from the basics, then we'll go to the highest levels. So, let's just say they say if sine 33 is equals to P, find cos. So let's start from the very basics. So find cos 33. So first of all, if you see P, this is just the same as P over 1, right? So sine is opposite of a hypotenuse. So we should draw a triangle and obviously it's going to be in the first quadrant because we're given an angle that is in the first quadrant. You're given an acute angle. So this is going to be 33. Right, so now this is going to be, and now the common thing that a lot of students don't do is to put this angle. Make sure you also put this angle because uh, not putting this angle causes some people to get stuck. Right, so notice that if we have a triangle and let's say this is theta, this is going to be 90 minus theta because they all have to add up to 180. Right, so basically, if we've got a triangle, a right angle triangle, and let's say this is 50. This side has to be 30, right? Because both of them have to add up to 90. So that when we add the other 90, it's 180, right? So basically, if this is x, this is 90 minus x. If this is 15, this is 90 minus 15, right? So notice that this is 33. So therefore, this will be 90 minus 33, which is 57. So if this is 33, that has to be 57. All right, so now... This is opposite of hypotenuse, right? So it means the opposite is P and the hypotenuse is 1. So we have to find the missing side. So we know by default that it's going to be 1 minus P squared, right? However, it's advisable to do the whole calculation because there is a mark for it, right? So let's not just miss a mark. Let's not miss a mark because we want to take a shortcut, right? So in trig, we say R squared is equal to F squared plus Y squared, right? So we can say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, but it's more advisable to say R squared equals to F squared plus Y squared in trig, right? So the hypotenuse is 1. So 1 squared is equal to X squared, which is what we're looking for, plus Y, which is P. So we're going to have P squared. And then when we take that to the other side, it's going to be 1 squared is 1. Then this is just going to be minus P squared is equal to X squared, right? So... The advice is you when you score with both sides, it's going to be plus or minus, right? So this is another thing that is not done by a lot of students, right? So make sure that let's say for instance um, you had x squared is equals to root three, rather let's just say x is equals to three, right? And let's say your triangle was on this side. So when you score with both sides, always have plus or minus. And then you choose the one that is correct according to the diagram. So if this was the case and we're looking for x, it would have been minus root 3, right? So make sure when you square root, always put a plus and a minus. So according to this stuff, we know that the correct one is plus, right? It's plus because it has to be on the positive side of the x-axis. So 1 minus p squared. So this is what we have. Or what? So now let's go further. So cos 33 cos 33 is just simply adjacent of a hypotenuse, right? So it's going to be root 1 minus p squared over 1, right? Which will eventually just be square root of 1 minus p squared, right? So the answer is just square root of 1 minus p squared. Or what? You can pause the video and try out this question. So, let's say you are given tan 57. So, this time we're no more referring to this angle, but this angle. The students, that do, uh, the students that don't put this angle usually take more time than they're supposed to, right? So make sure you always put the angle there. So when you have 33, put 57 over there. So when you have got an angle here, put 90 minus that angle, right? So 90 minus 33 is 57. So turn 57. Now another misconception that is done is to memorize that this side is the adjacent and this side is the opposite. But it's not true. It depends on the angle, right? So the common misconception that a lot of students do is to memorize this side as the adjacent and this side as the opposite. It's not true. It depends on the angle. So to this angle, this side is the opposite because it's directly facing it, right? But to this angle, this one is now the opposite, right? So another thing you can do in order to fix that problem is that whenever you are referring to this angle, you can keep the triangle like this. This is your adjacent, this is your opposite. But when you're looking at this triangle, you can actually flip the paper around. 
so you can actually turn the paper around so that this is now your adjacent when you're looking at this angle this is now your adjacent and that is your opposite so now that we're dealing with tan 57 we can actually flip the paper right so we can flip it so that um, this is now our adjacent and this is our opposite, right? So tan is opposite of adjacent, meaning that the opposite will be root 1 minus p squared and the adjacent will be p. So, therefore, tan 57 is square root of 1 minus p squared over p. And literally, this is the answer. Alright, so let's just say they ask you to find cos 2, 13. So, now, since it's not one of these angles, we have to check if it's bigger than 90. Let's find out the z reduction. So, this is in the third quadrant. So, in the third quadrant, the rule is 180 plus, right? So, 180 plus, what gives you 213? 180 plus 33. So, this 33 appears, so we know that we're on the right track. So, then this, when we reduce it, because cos in the third quadrant is negative, it's negative cos 33, right? And cos 33 is adjacent of a hypotenuse, right? So it's just going to be negative. Then it's going to be root 1 minus p squared over 1, right? So this is just eventually going to be negative root 1 minus p squared. So this is the answer. So let's go higher. But before we go higher, let's just do one more question. Let's say you're asked to find tan 303. So you can pause the video and try this out. Alright, some students would literally say it's going to be 2 because they want to make it look like this. So they'll say it's 270 plus 33. It is correct, but it leads to some long procedures, right? So the advice is whenever an angle is bigger than 180, you can always reduce it as normal. And it should match one of these angles. So even if it does not match 33, it will match 57. So notice that it's going to be tan. So this is in the fourth quadrant. So if you reduce it as normal, it's going to be 360 minus. So 360 minus what gives you 3 over uh, 303? It's 360 minus 57. So notice that now we can reduce it as normal. It matches one of these angles, right? So this is going to be negative because tan is negative in the fourth quadrant. So negative tan 57. And if you flip this triangle around, you realize that this is the opposite and that is the adjacent. So it's going to be minus. So it's going to be opposite which is 1 minus p squared over adjacent so this eventually is just going to be negative root 1 minus p squared over p so there we have it so right now let's go higher or what so now let's go for another level so let's just say the say find so let's say the say find let's say sine 66 right so, this is not reduction because it's not greater than 90, and neither is it one of the two angles. So, what we have to do is do it, uh, we have to check is it double of one of the two angles. So, it is double of 33, right? So, if it is double of 33, notice that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta, right? So, therefore, we're going to change this into 2 times 33, right? So we have to change it into a form. So every time the angle is double, we have to change it into a form of a double angle, right? So we're going to do this. So we know that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, right? So sine 2 theta, 2 sine 2, uh, sine 2 theta, 2 sine theta cos theta. So therefore, sine 2 33 is 2 sine 33 cos 33, right? So another mistake that is done by a lot of students is to literally say sine 33 okay notice that sine 33 is p over 1 right but some students literally say sine okay they actually say sine p over 1 it is not correct right because notice sine 33 is p over 1 so we have to substitute the whole thing with p over 1 so p over 1 is not the angle right so we can't say sine p over 1. So that's another common thing. I've uh, literally seen this done a lot, right? So be careful of that. So we have to substitute the whole thing with p over 1 because sine 33 is p over 1. So then it's going to be p over 1. Then afterwards, here we're going to have cos 33, right? So it's adjacent of a hypotenuse. 
so therefore it's root 1 minus p squared over 1 right so therefore the final answer of this stuff is 2p into okay so matter of fact we can just we don't need brackets anymore right so it's 1 minus p squared so there we have it this is our final answer all right here is another question find cos 1 1 4 so you can pause the video and try it out just before i continue if you want to be cheated whether it is online or physically whether it is the situation where you're struggling in maths or whether it is the situation where you're good in maths but want perfection take a screenshot or save these details whether you're studying cambridge which is the uk curriculum or whether you're studying nsc which is the south african curriculum or ieb or native courses which start from n1 to n6 or any curriculum you're doing no matter which country you're at we offer tutorials we've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week we also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvement make sure you go as far as possible so this we have to check if we reduce it it's not going to look like one of these angles right so it's not reduction is it double well it is not double of 33 but it's double of 57 right so since it's a double angle we're going to change it into 2 times 57 right so we know that cos has three identities so cos 2 theta is equals to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta so that's one of them let me just write all of them here all right just not to waste time so i would advise you to make sure you claim this you have to know compound and double angled by head right those who don't know there are some disadvantages right those who rely on the formula sheet so cos 2 theta is uh, can just change into one of these right so what do you do when you've got this situation because usually in trigonometry if you have got cos 2 theta and there is maybe a sign next to it then we know that we have to change it into this one right or even this one but most likely this one right or if it was next to cos maybe it was next to 2 cos theta then we know we have to change it into this one right because it has cos however this one we're not given any indication so what you do is that you can literally choose any the answer is still going to be the same so let's prove it so let's say i take the first one so if i take the first one it's going to be so cos 2 theta is uh cos 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta right so cos 257 is cos squared 57 minus sine squared 57. so cos squared 57 i want you to see it as uh as cos 57 so i want you to see this as cos 57 squared right so picture it like that so that it can be easy to substitute so cos 57 so now notice cos is adjacent of a hypotenuse right if we turn this triangle around now this is the adjacent this the hypotenuse so it's p over 1 so it's going to be p over 1 but squared right because cos 57 is p over 1 so you're going to square then minus sine 57 which is opposite of a hypotenuse so the opposite is 1 minus p squared so over hypotenuse right so this is squared because it's sine squared so let's go further so now here notice that this is going to end up being so let's just do this this is going to end up being p squared minus now the square will cancel the square root right so then it's going to be but it's in brackets because we're minusing two times so be careful so um we're going to say 1 minus p squared so then this is going to end up being so if we do this this is going to end up being p squared minus one plus p squared so notice that this is eventually so it's eventually two p squared minus one and there we have it so what if we use another identity what if we use this one so let's prove that it's the same so so let's go for the second one right so what if i change it to the second one so cos cos two theta is two cos squared theta minus one so cos 257 is 2 cos squared 57 minus 1. So remember, we take this as though it is written like this, right? So that you can substitute. So cos 57 is adjacent of a hypotenuse. So the adjacent side, the adjacent of 57 is P, so P over 1. So notice that this part is just going to be um, P over 1, right? So we have P over 1 all squared. So there's a 2 outside. And it's going to be minus one but now notice that this is just p squared so eventually we have two p squared minus one all right here is the next level so 
let's say you are given cos 63 right so this is not reduction right so what can you do so now another thing you must check is that is it a combination of a special angle and one of this angle so notice um, one of these angles right so notice that we have um, we have the special angles 30 45 60 and 90 honestly zero will not help us so what can we do so notice that if we say 3 plus 33 we eventually do get 63 right so therefore it is a combination of a special angle which is 60 and 33 so sometimes it's a combination of a special angle adding with one of these angles sometimes it's a combination of a special angle subtracting one of these angles right so it has to be a combination of a special angle and one of these angles whether adding or subtracting so now that we found that it's a combination of 60 and 33 so now this whenever we've got two angles adding right whenever we've got this stuff you always use compound angles so let's expand it using compound angles so now this is the same as cos 60 cos 33 minus sine 60 sine 33 right so now notice that cos 60 is so it's a special angle right so cos 60 is 1 over 2 so without the calculator even if you use the calculator still the same so um, even if it was not the same you are allowed to use the calculator by the way so if they say don't use the calculator use the calculator that's the advice wherever they say don't use the calculator use the calculator they're just saying don't just move from the question to the answer immediately so you have to do steps and pretend as though you did not use the calculator so now cos 33 we have it in terms of p right cos 33 is uh, adjacent of a hypotenuse right so it is 1 minus p squared over 1 Okay, so let me just make it a bit better so this is going to be over 1 so then this is going to be minus sine 60 is square root 3 over 2 whether with the calculator or without the calculator the answer will be exactly the same then sine 33 is opposite of our hypotenuse right so this is going to be this stuff so now from here let's go further so this is going to be so when we multiply uh, one multiplies this stuff right the rules of multiplications of fractions is that numerator multiplies numerator and denominator multiplies denominator okay fine so since this is not writing let's go for a different marker so let's go for black so this is going to be square root of one minus p squared then this is going to be two then this is going to be root uh, rather root three p over two right so the denominators are usually the same then when the denominators are the same according to the rules of adding fractions when the denominators are the same all we have to do is just to add the numerator so it becomes one minus p squared minus square root of 3p literally this is the answer so that's what we have all right here is another one literally we have got cos 3 so you can pause the video and try it out just before we continue if you're interested in knowing the prices of the tutorials the video that contains the prices and the updated contact details just in case the sons have changed is found at the end of this video so now when you look at this stuff right we have got cost three what can we do there are actually two things we can do so this bothers a lot of students so notice this um number one obviously we can reduce and we don't have an angle adding to 33 um to give you this because this is too small but somehow there is so is there a combination of a special angle and one of these angles there is actually for both of them to make it worse this three is the same as 30 um rather um let's do this is it for both of them i guess it's only for one of them yep i thought it was both okay fine only one of them so this is going to be um 60 minus 57 yep literally so this is the only one let me see i thought there was another one as well okay yep looks like that is it oh matter of fact there is indeed another one what is the other one okay another one you can do is you can say it's the same as cos um 33 minus 30 here is another one right 
So that is it, literally. So there is another one in a way, but uh, let's not make things weirder. So you can use any one of these two and expand and you'll get your answer, right? So let me just choose any one of these. Let's just choose this one. Let's choose the one that looks more, um, that is supposed to be more complicated. So when you expand this, this is the same as cos 60, cos 57, and then come on, this is 57, and then this is sine 60, sine 57. Okay, so sine 57. All right, so now cos 60 is 1 over 2, whether with the calculator or without the calculator, same stuff. And then cos 57, when you turn this around, this is going to be adjacent of a hypotenuse, so it's going to be p over 1. And then sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So uh, when, it, uh, when you turn this around, this is opposite, this is hypotenuse. All right. So I thought this was going to be a bit more harder, but it's the same as the other one. So either way, either one you choose will still work. So this is going to be p over 2, then this is going to be root 3. 3 okay so notice this two will multiply right so this two will multiply so whenever you've got something like square root of 2 times square root of 3 notice that this is the same as exponents when the exponents are the same you can multiply the basis but you can ignore what i just said all you can do is that if you have square root of something times square root of something you can just multiply what is inside so you can just say 2 times 3 which is root 6 right so it's the same thing here this multiplies so this is the same as 3 multiplied by everything inside 1 minus p squared so i hope you get it so this is 3 multiplied by everything inside there so then this is going to be over 2 so let's get the simplest form so this is going to be 2 and then it's going to be p minus so this stuff is going to end up being 3 minus 3 p squared yep so that is it let's go for the second last level after this, we go for the last level, which will be interesting. So, let's talk about um, this. Let's say we have sine. So, let's just say we have got sine 24. Yep, sine 24. All right, you can pause the video and you can try it out. So, looking at this stuff. This is not reduction, of course, it's not double one of the angles, so what can we do? So, it's not a combination of, literally, it's not a combination of a special angle and one of the angles. You can try all combinations, whether adding or subtracting, it literally will not work. So, what can we do? So, here, the other thing you have to consider is that sometimes it's a combination of these two, right? So... Of course, they will never be adding because if they add, they will definitely give you 90, right? So, sometimes it's a combination of these two. Sometimes it's these two subtracting, right? So, if they give you 24, notice that this is the same as sine 57 minus 33. So, this is a special one. This comes out in the exam. So, sometimes you have to check. So, this is supposed to be one of the hardest questions in the exam, but really, it is not hard. So... You just, you just have to keep this in mind. So one of the things you must check is, uh, is it one of the angles that appear here, right? Is it a reduction? Is it double angles? Is it a combination of one of this angle and a special angle, right? Whether adding or subtracting. Another thing you have to consider is that, is it actually these two subtracting? So now this we can expand it. Compound angles, right? So this is going to be sine 57 cos 33 minus cos 57 sine 33 right so some students actually memorize it as sine 33 cos 57 it's still the same stuff right so sine 57 when you turn this triangle around it is opposite of a hypotenuse so it's going to be 1 minus p squared and then cos 33 cos 33 is adjacent of a hypotenuse so wow we have the same thing so it means that the roots will cancel okay so now here we have cos 57 cos 57 is p over 1 therefore sine 53 will also be p over 1 so it's going to be the same thing so it's just p and p let's just leave it like that so we can do this just for substitution right but obviously the next step because that's what it is sine 57 is um opposite of hypotenuse so it's this over one but honestly 
the next step this is what it's going to be right so now notice that this part so i hope that did not confuse you right so um sign uh, sign 57 is opposite of hypotenuse so instead of this it's supposed to be this over one right but the answer is the same as this stuff so um notice that when you multiply this stuff the square roots will cancel out so we're going to have this multiplying so notice that we're literally going to have this stuff we're going to have this multiplying in brackets and then this is just p squared so let's go further so now this i'm going to use the shortcut so the shortcut is just going to be minus 2p squared plus p to the power of 4 minus p squared for this stuff so if you use this you will have four terms but at the end you'll have this so this is going to be i'm going to start with the highest power p to the power of 4 and then this minus this is 3p squared then we have plus 1 and there we have it now we can go for the last level all right let's say you are given cos 15 okay not 15 but 16 comma 5 so you can pause the video and try this out all right so notice that this is not one of these angles right neither is it reduction obviously it's less than 180 in neither is it a combination of a special angle and one of these angles right this is literally not like anything we've done so it's also not double the angle so now notice that this is actually half the angle right so what do you do whenever you see that is now half the angle so if this is half the given angle my advice is always write the equation so notice this is cos so we're going to write the equation of cos so notice that cos 2 theta is equals to remember cos has three identities but notice we've got cos so we have to choose the one with cos so it's going to be 2 cos squared theta minus 1 right so what you can do is just to simply substitute so if we substitute it's going to be 2 times 16.5 is equals to 2 cos squared 16.5 minus 1 right so this is going to be when we when we do this this is going to be 33 we finally have what we had at the beginning right so this is going to be 2 cos squared 16.5 minus 1 so what we're interested in is this part we want to make it the subject of the formula because that is exactly what they're asking so at the end we want to have cos 16.5 is equals to so at the end we want to have cos 16.5 is equals to something right that's what we want to have at the end because they ask us for that right so this part we already know it cos 33 we have it in the diagram so cos 33 is adjacent of a hypotenuse so it's this uh, root 1 minus p squared over 1 which is still the same as root 1 minus p squared right so we have this so now we have got cos squared 16.5 minus 1 so now we need to make it the subject of the formula so that's what we do every time so we're going to say 1 minus p squared minus 1 cos I, uh, plus 1 rather cos i took 1 to the other side of the equation right so this is going to end up being 2 cos squared 16.5 so this is going to be so we divide both sides by 2 so if we divide both sides by 2 eventually we're going to have cos squared one six uh cos squared rather 16.5 so we want it to be the subject of the formula so we have to square root both sides so we're literally literally going to end up having so this is this so we're literally going to have like a double square root right so this is what we have so this is the final answer right so cos 16.5 so we have to do our best to make 16 cos 16.5 the subject of the formula so there we have answered them so this is the answer of cos 16.5 so every time they give you half the angle write the double angle equation and choose the one that is relevant to the question and then you make it the subject of the formula all right let me give you a question to try out so i wanted to skip and go to the last last question but let me give you one more question to try out so here is a question or what so you can pause the video and try this out 
So when you look at this, of course, it's like none of the situations we've done before except for what we just did. It is double of one of the angles. So it's no more double of this angle. Rather, it's not half of this angle, but it is now half of this angle, right? So you have to check if it's either half of this angle or half of the other angle. Or if, uh, or we have to check if it's double one of these angles or double the other angle. So whenever you're checking, you can check if it's double one of these angles or half of these angles. So this time it's not half of this angle, but half of the other angle. So let's work it out. So since it's half of that, we know we have to use double angles. And we will not use the double angle for sine in this case. We'll still use for cos. So I'll show you when to use sine. So we have cos 2 theta is equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, right? So we just substitute this. So then this is going to be cos 2 times 28.5. So 2 times 28.5 equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared 28.5. So as usual, they ask for this, so therefore we have to solve for this, right? So I have to make it a subject of formula. So now, this is going to be 2 times 28.5 is 57, right? Just like what we have in the triangle. So now we have 1 minus 2 sine squared 28.5. So we want to make this the subject of the formula. So if we take this to the other side, okay, before we take it to the other side, let's find out cos 57. So it's adjacent, which is P over hypotenuse, which is 1. So it's much easier. So it's P over 1. So this is what we have, which is just P. So this is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared 28.5. So if we take that to the other side of the equation, we're going to have P minus 1, right? And then this is going to be equal to minus 2 sine squared 28.5. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. So divide by negative 2, then this goes out. So we now have this. So we want to solve for 28.5, right? So what we're going to do, I mean sine 28.5. So now what's left is just for us to square root. So we're going to square root. So it's going to be, so we just square root both sides. So if we square root, eventually the square root will cancel the square. And then we're going to be left with sine 28.5. Yep, there we have it. All right, so now let's go for the last question. So they can literally ask you to solve for sine, so sine 16 comma 5 cos 16 comma 5. So what are you going to do? In metric level, whenever you see sine theta and cos theta together, it's always double angles for sine, right? So whenever you see sine 16 comma 5 cos 16 comma 5, it's double angles. So what you're going to do is that you're going to write the equation for sine this time. So you only write the equation for sine when you've got sine and cos together. So notice that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So we're just going to substitute. So it's going to be sine 2 times 16.5 is equal to 2 sine 16.5 cos 16.5 so now since the ask us for this we have to make this the subject of the formula right so for now we have 2 times 16.5 which is the same as sine 33 right so sine 33 is equal to 2 sine 16.5 cos 16.5 so sine 33 is opposite of hypotenuse p over 1 which is just the same as p right so p is equals to then it's going to be uh, 2 sine 16.5 cos 16.5 so we want to make this the subject of, form of the formula so all we have to do is just to divide by 2 so if we divide by 2 on both sides we're just going to have these two cancelling and this is what we're going to have so there we have it all right we have reached the end of this video i have included a playlist of similar type of questions if you enjoyed this video please like the video and subscribe to my channel any questions of god or any video you want me to create please comment below see you in the next video